Joining me now from Jerusalem, Yaakov Katz, senior columnist and editor at the Jerusalem Post. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, there's still a lack of clarity as to why this um, truce was delayed. What's your understanding about these logistical details they've been heading into? These are very complicated uh, situations, right? We, we, Israel is not talking directly with Hamas. It's only working through intermediaries and mediators such as the Qataris who are in Doha. The Qataris are talking to Hamas leaders that live in Doha, but they also don't necessarily have direct line to the Hamas leaders who are underground bear, hiding inside some bomb shelter or bunker in the, uh, in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. So it's very technical, it's very complicated, and the steps move very slowly. With that said, it's also, there's a lot of pressure, right? Israel still has uh, forces on the ground inside Gaza. Those operations are continuing. And part of what Hamas's strategy, I think, here is to get Israel to stop for a few days so it can regroup, rearm, redeploy, and be better prepared for continued offensive later on. Uh, there's been opposition, obviously, within Israel um, to this pause in the fighting. Uh, one of the reasons being that it may mean that the battle to topple Hamas is over. Just explain that thinking. You're right, Max. Uh, you know, on the one hand, you have the situation where everybody wants to do whatever is possible to get back these hostages. The fact that so many civilians were taken, there's over 235 Israelis who are still being held inside the Gaza Strip or hostages in the Gaza Strip. And they're under this deal, they're only getting back about 50 of the women, children and the elderly women but there's still gonna be a lot who will be left inside Gaza. So Israel, Israelis are very much aligned that everything needs to be done to get back the hostages. With that said, Israelis are also very aligned and support the government's offensive and the military operation to take down Hamas, to uh, degrade Hamas's capabilities, to remove it from power in Gaza and prevent it from ever, ever being able to carry out the atrocities and massacre like it did on October 7th. Now, if the operation stops now, when only half of Gaza has been conquered by Israel, and still so many thousands of Hamas fighters alive and still armed to the teeth in the south of Gaza, with the Hamas leadership still intact, the operation is, is not yet a success. And I think the concern is that we could very see how this plays out, that ultimately the operation just comes to an end. There will be international pressure. Hamas will trickle out hostages every single day. Under the deal, it's 10 a day. They'll offer at day five. Give us another couple of days. We'll give you a few more. The Americans, the Europeans will be pressuring Israel to agree to a long-term ceasefire. What, what does this mean for the continued security, though, of the state of Israel? And that is the question that hovers above everything right now. And what position is Netanyahu in right now? Because you've seen the polling showing his polling numbers are pretty awful. But I guess as long as he keeps that coalition cabinet together, he stays in post. Netanyahu stays in post for now, and he's able to keep that cabinet and the coalition together for now. And I mention, I emphasize for now, because the, the day this war is over, there will be a day of reckoning that will also have to come to his doorstep. He's been the one official from you looking at the top military uh, security establishment and the defense minister. Everyone has said we take personal responsibility for the failures of October 7th that led to this, the outbreak of this war and to Israel being caught by surprise. He's the only one who refuses to take responsibility, even though he's been asked so many different times. And I think it's telling. The re there's two reasons why. One is he doesn't believe he's responsible. But the second one is that he believes he has a day after politically. So if he takes responsibility now, he's essentially preventing himself from being able to stay in power. He wants to stay in power, even though... My opinion, I think the opinion of a lot of people, and you said the polls, right? He's he's his rating, his approval ratings are in the 20 percentile percentiles, is that he believes that he can stay in power, even though he is the ultimate person who should be held responsible for what happened here. Uh, and what do you make of the international support amongst Israeli allies? Is that fracturing? Because some suggesting that perhaps European leaders are you know, re you know, they s remain behind Israel's right to defend itself, but at the same time feel um, that the number of civili civilian casualties is, is too high and there needs to be a reset there. So perhaps a slight separation between the views of the US and Europe on this one. You know, Max, you touch upon a very important point, and that is the international support for Israel's continued offensive in Gaza. And it's important, right, because the, the, the military operation requires the resilience of the Israeli people. It requires the military to have the capabilities, the munitions, the arms, the military platforms it needs. But it also requires 
Israel to have the international legitimacy and for its allies to support it. Today, we saw the visit of David Cameron, the former British prime minister, now foreign secretary, visiting one of the Israeli communities that was ravaged and rampaged through by those Hamas terrorists on October 7th. He's here in Israel. I think the support still stands, and I'll tell you why. I think that the political leadership in these countries, they all understand that what happened here in Israel on October 7th, it started here, but it could, they could easily envision and imagine it one day happening in their own countries. When you look at the Bridge of London and you see the hundreds of thousands of people who are walking there and chanting Intifada, and they are chanting for jihad, and you see the pictures that are coming out of France and the explosion of anti-Semitism, this is a battle against all of the values that we should all share, all people of the West and all democratic people. And while today they attack Israel, Tomorrow, it could be in the UK, it could be in France and Germany, it could be in the United States of America. And that is why these leaders should stand strong and understand that this is a battle for all civilized life today on this planet. Yaakov Katz in Jerusalem. Really appreciate your analysis today. Thank you. Thank you.